Hola, buenas tardes, buen día, buenas noches uh, from the Enchanted Island, uh, San Juan, Puerto Rico. In more detail, the San Juan Sea Wrap. In even further detail, San Juan Center. Today, we're going to be looking at uh, some very fundamental aspects of radar training that you will see as you make your way through the stage training downstairs in the lab. And then when you come up to the OJT environment, if you are a, um, a third party, maybe a casual observer, somebody who's just interested and stumbled upon this video, then welcome as well. Uh, this will be some air traffic control uh, fundamentals that, uh, who knows, you might be interested in get a kick out of. So my name is Steve. I hope everybody is uh, doing well wherever you're at, whether you're sheltered in place or in quarantine. And uh, let's dive right into it. Um, just a little caveat, just to, just to set up, just to orientate you, we're gonna see a screenshot, what's gonna look like a radar screenshot, still images of uh, data tags, you know, aircraft being represented by, by text, and we're just gonna go over what needs to be done. So we'll show you a flashcard, and then we'll go over a bullet point list, and then we'll show you the same flashcard again, and you can go over and practice it yourself. And this is an opportunity for you trainees, or excuse me, developmentals, to practice your traffic calls, weather calls, uh, frequency changes, all kind of good stuff to test your knowledge in a little interactive way. So without further ado, ready, set, jets, go, and I will see you at the next slide. All right, well, look what we have going on. Good to have you back, and uh, yeah. This was made in Microsoft Paint. This is not an actual screenshot taken um, taken from a real micro ERs workstation. So you might be wondering, what is micro ERs? Well, micro ERs stands for Micro Processor In Route uh, Automation Radar Tracking System. It is the automation system that San Juan Center uses to display aircraft on the scope. Uh, this, the radar data gets coupled with uh, digital computer data and it presents this to us. So this is what we have available. Yes, we have a black background. The green shading is that of sector two. So sector two in San Juan makes up um, the southeast kind of little wedge of the uh, island of Puerto Rico. You can see the two, dot, uh, the two circles right there to the immediate east as you make your way east from the left side of the screen is uh, St. Thomas. Uh, the British Virgin Islands, south of that is St. Croix, so it kind of gives you an idea of where we're at geographically in the world. And if you make your way over to that knife, almost diamond looking thing, that's uh, Princess Juliana uh, radar approach control. And then that shares the common boundary. Um, if you make your way southeast, now you're looking at the uh, foreign airspace uh, in detail, Piarco Center. Um, BC Bird, uh, Antigua, they have an approach control, uh, La Rosette, which is uh, on the island of uh, Fort de France, Martinique, and then you have uh, Bradshaw, Golden Rock, which is uh, St. Kitts and Nevis, and uh, that just basically does it all. So looking at this freeze frame as you sit down, let's just pretend that you sat down on position and you are ready to go hot with the mic and you are ready to make some traffic calls. So what exactly needs to be done? Well, we have the luxury of having this be a free frame. This is not a dynamic, this is not moving pictures. Uh, this is just a screenshot. But there are some things that we have to consider and there's uh, priorities and there are some things at play and this is a good opportunity for you to take your time and be able to go over each of it. So let's take a look here and a couple things right off the bat. The little jagged, the little blinking, this is our targets who are in handoff status, micro ERs target will flash at you either when a handoff is being presented to you or another controller has taken a handoff from you. So just keep that in mind. So maybe in another video we'll go over anatomy of a data tag and stuff like that. But for now, um, this is what it looks like. And these are pretty real call signs. These are aircraft that we deal with on the regular. So in these are situations that we deal with on the regular. So let's uh, let's jump right into it and uh, just take a look here. Looks like we got a WestJet 2513 and coming up on Hillary. We have American 2295 at 34, JetBlue 385 opposite direction at 33. We have C-14600 descending to flight level 60. We have a Rouge 1330 maintaining and uh, level at flight level 50 interim. Looks like we have a Mode C intruder, somebody uh, with a beacon code of 6532 or squawking 6532 at uh, 160, flight level 160. Looks like we have Sunwing 115 approaching Elopo. Looks like they're leaving 17.8 and they're assigned 36. You have Air France 498. Looks like they're approaching Manolo, climbing out of uh, one, 
2000, our flight level 124. Condor 103 is landing San Juan, they're at 36. United 1287 looks like they are uh, descending to flight level 210, probably a crossing restriction. JetBlue 2760 is climbing to 36, just uh, west of Juice. Seabreeze 323 is at flight level 80. It looks like they have been handed off to uh, the satellite sector of San Juan Approach. Goodspeed 113 Bravo and Goodspeed 11 Alpha. Looks like they could probably use a traffic call. One's at flight level 175, the other's at 165. BFR uh, Platices, uh, Platai. Or, I don't know. Uh, Yukon 800. Looks like they are uh, the handoff has been accepted from R5 controller, and they are crossing Vetus at 11,000. And to um, sum it all up, you have Delta 908 at 33,000 feet, flight level 330, and they do land Juliana. So it looks like we're gonna have to get them down as well. So the stage is set. So let's take a look at the bullet points and let's take care of this together. We can get through this. Two heads are better than one, and I'm here to help, and let's let's have some fun. So let's start firing away, but before we do that, let's take a look at the bullet list and see what is required of us. See you at the next slide. All right, ready, set, heavy, jet. Steve here again, welcome back. So this is sector two, scenario one. You just got a quick glimpse of what's going on. Maybe you were able to take a look at it, kind of get, uh, in your head what exactly is going on and, and what needs to be done so don't fear we're gonna get through this together as you see there's a bulleted list here these are not numbered it's bullets so we're not really talking priorities here you know what i mean the reward of you finding something that you have to do go out and find work to do right and as soon as you find it practice taking care of it practice what needs done and move on it's wonderful like your reward for finding the job is to do the job so like i said we're not worried about priorities right now it's we are frozen in time, so just pretend that you have an indefinite amount of time to take care of all these situations that are brewing. The targets are not moving. It's absolutely wonderful. Uh, when they say there's no pause buzz in air traffic control, that is very true. But right now we are able to pause and just say, hey, let's take a look at this. This is a little, little game day footage here. So without further ado, let's dive into some of the things that may be obvious or not so glaringly obvious on what you have to do. Uh, emerging target procedures. We love those, right? Uh, turbojets, regardless of, uh, or correction, uh, turbojets uh, 10,000 feet or above, we have to make sure we give them that. So JetBlue 385, American 2235 are opposite direction, 1,000 feet apart. They are great candidates for emerging target procedures. So good, keep that in mind. Keep in mind what phraseology you're going to use. Both Delta 908, who lands Juliana or St. Martin via Slugo, and Condor 103, who lands San Juan via Vetus, are ready for descent. They call you up, say, hey, we want to go down. And what do you do? Well, if you look at the previous slide and in the next slide where we'll have another freeze frame, uh, they are in conflict. They both want to get down. So this might require us to step descent, reference each other. Who wants to send the most? Do we, how do we do that? And how do we do it where it's efficient for us that we don't have to constantly babysit the, the two arrivals? Uh, Goodspeed 11 Alpha and Goodspeed 113 Bravo, what needs done with them? Well, we are giving them VFR advisories, one to St. Barth, to San Juan and one from San Juan to St. Bart. So we owe them a traffic call, right? We have them radar identified. We have them on frequency. We have them uh, presented in a tag. We are giving them advisories. This is probably one of those advisories that we should be giving. Uh, who do you hand off Seabreeze 323 to? Okay, that's a good question and keep that in mind. It's gonna be the satellite sector, R3, R7. And what frequency? Well, we'll go over that. And how can you tell? Well, we'll go over that too. This will test uh, overall knowledge of the airspace and uh, the workings of that. Who do you hand Yukon 800 off to? What sector and frequency? Well, good. We'll keep that in mind. Yukon was that one descending to 11,000 to the west, uh, one of the westmost aircraft on the scope. Uh, what's going on over Elopo? Does traffic need given? Well, probably. Uh, you have a Sunwing approaching Elopo and you have a United going in over Elopo. So you have a head-on situation there. So, um, yeah, you're probably going to owe them a traffic call. What's going on over Gabar? How can you solve this? Well, you see you have Seaborne 4600, who already has a restriction to cross Gabar at 6, and a Rouge uh, 1330, I believe, is maintaining 5. So you know they're at 5, but you know they're going to want higher. So we're going to try to solve that in an efficient manner, too, as well. Uh, Seaborne 45A3 calls to flight level 160. Based on that, uh, where do you think they are? Well, if you remember that there's an, air, there's an aircraft over Modix, 
uh, what we call mode C intruder. They're squawking discrete beacon code at an IFR altitude, right for direction of flight, and but yet not radar identified. We don't have a full data block. There's been no auto acquisition of the data tag on the target. So it's a good chance that it's probably them. Well, well, it is them. So we'll figure out how to reconcile that. Chapter 2760 just checked in southeast of Juice. Hawking Climate Aircraft Reference Condor 103. Great question. Condor wants to get down and JetBlue wants to get up. And his climb, JetBlue's climb, and Condor's descent are in conflict with each other. Or at least it looks like it is now. We're going to want to use positive separation here. And Western 2513 checks in southeast of Villary. What does that air, what does this aircraft need? Well, probably going to need traffic before you terminate, uh, I believe it's the JetBlue. So it'd be nice to hold on to everybody, give, let everybody in the know, and don't put the uh, merging target procedure on Piarco Center's airspace, you know what I mean, or Piarco's workforce, you know. So this is good. It's good. The, 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 say, the stage is set. The guests are met. And let us go to the next slide. I will see you there and we'll dive into this. We'll go over the phraseology. We'll go over everything you need to do. So I can't wait. I hope you're pumped as much as I am. I know I'm pretty pumped and I hope you are too. So uh, yeah, I'll see you there. All right, ready, set, jets, go. Let's dive right into this. So you may have had some time to take a look at uh, what exactly is going on, get a feel for what your first couple calls will be. And that's good because guess what? When you sit down and the targets are actually moving, we're probably going to say, hey, what are your first three calls? What's plan A, plan B, plan C? You know what I mean? What are you going to do? And this is your chance with nobody interrupting you, no aircraft uh, stepping over each other, no controllers in your ear trying to coordinate. You just have a screenshot here of what can be done. And there's no real wrong answer because we're not really talking about priorities here. And there's really nothing dire or pressing going on at all, really. The only thing I'd be worried about is I'd like to know, hey, is that C-145-83 coming up on Modex, approaching Modex at flight level 160? It'd be good to know. I want to I get that aircraft radar identified in, uh, as soon as I can because they are entering my airspace. Now, granted, they are approved to enter the airspace, right? RD side did that, you know. You're a certified D side if you're watching this. And, or if you're not, just know that there's another controller, not the radar controller, who's approving these aircraft from these foreign facilities, especially this sector in particular. There's a lot of that. All aircraft are coordinated via on the landline, um, you know, telephone, and we approve them at a certain altitude, at a certain time, at a certain fix, maybe even a certain beacon code so we can see them right away. So there, so I'd be worried about the Seaborn, Seaborn 4583 or whatever the call sign is, Seaborn 4583, Sam 1 Center, Squawk, and then Squawk whatever new beacon code we have for them. Easy enough there, let's get him right, let's get uh, that aircraft radar identified. Uh, you have Westhead 2513, a very simple, hello, how you doing? Westhead 2513, Sam 1 Center, radar contact seven miles southeast Hillary. There you go, perfect. You. You just radar identified them. Maybe if they didn't check in with their altitude, which sometimes they don't, what's the 2513 safe flight level? Easy enough. Verify that mode C. Let's move up. Uh, very simple merging target procedure, right? Reciprocal track traffic. American 2295 traffic 12 o'clock, 100 miles, southeast bound Airbus A320, level 330. Perfect. Very good. This is a great opportunity for you to practice your merging target procedures. Uh, JetBlue 385, JetBlue 385. Traffic, 12 o'clock, 22 miles, northwest bound, Airbus A321, level 340. Beautiful. Good job. You know, that's all you got to do. Just this is an opportunity for you to practice. Um, no distractions. Really good stuff. C14600, they're sending the six, and you have a Rouge who's level at five. So let's get the, we would, theoretically, the Rouge is going to want to climb right away, and, and Seaborn hasn't started down yet. You could vector Rouge out of the way, vector him to the southwest, climb him to say 14, reference your Seaborne and Modix or something like that, or even 15, reference your guy at Modix. Uh, turn him out of the way so you have Seaborne, give traffic, maybe even have an opportunity to use some visual separation there, but traffic's going to be given so you can practice your uh, traffic call there. You have another opportunity to practice traffic call. There's Sunwing 115. The D side has that aircraft climbing to 200, even though it's not in the data block. And you have United Crossing Elopo at 21. That's another opportunity for a traffic call. You know, Boeing 737, two Boeing 737s. An easy one is radar identifying Air France 498. Practice that. Approaching Manolo, verify the mode C. Easy enough. We know that Condor wants to get down, reference Delta, and Delta wants to get down. Maybe you can start descending. Uh, you can start descending either aircraft, right? Whoever you want to, you know, they both want to get down. So maybe start down Delta so you have some altitude to give Condor. You know, you can you could already start Condor down to 34 because Delta's at 33. So maybe start Delta down. Say Delta 908, descend now, flight level 
290, then cross Slugo at whatever altitude is coordinated. That'd be great. And then you could start the condor down. Now, JetBlue is a little tricky because JetBlue is climbing on Blue 520 or Bravo 520, and Condor is going to cut right across on their way to Vetus. Well, you know, to send Condor to, you know, maybe whatever Delta is doing, just get JetBlue up in something respectable, maybe 24, 22, start them off small, and then see how it all ends up as see how everybody's performing and stuff like that. That, that that's a good way to do it so you know see what condor is descending to you know you're gonna start condor down 34 and you're gonna see how delta descends and keep condor going down reference delta and then jet blue just gets whatever is available you know if delta's descending good and you're able to give condor a little bit just find a happy medium condor still got some miles to fly before he has to get to vetus and even after vetus he still got some miles to fly to um land san juan especially from the east uh, good speed 113 Bravo and good speed 111 Bravo. As we said, our duty as a controller doing VFR advisories is to give them traffic. This is your moment. This, they have traffic. You know, I mean, you're the poor man's TCAS, so just let them know about each other. And that brings us to Yukon 800. Real simple, Yukon 800, a simple frequency change, right? 120.9, it's the R5 controller. He's flashing, and I'm sorry, that goes back to Seabreeze. Another simple handoff. Practice your frequency changes with Seabreeze 323. Very simple there. So, as you see, seemingly a lot of aircraft, what may not have been abundantly clear, we just talked our way through it, and you'll get better. This is like a self-briefing, what's going through our minds, and you'll be there in no time. So just give this a go, practice, see how your phraseology is, and try to make it perfect, uh, and have a good time while doing it. Remember, this is fun, so I will see you at the next lesson. Well, hello again. I hope everything was fun with that last situation. I know it was a good time. I mean, let's put it this way. When you sit down to Sector 2, whether you're in the lab or in the lab environment or training in the lab or in the lab environment or here with a steel shot, a freeze frame, you're guaranteed to have a good time. I promise you that. So let's dive in here. We see a couple targets here on the scope. And let's let's just let's just take a look here. We have some we got some trouble brewing up over Trinky, over Dandy. Couple aircraft checking in from the non-radar airspace. Couple climbing aircraft. Couple aircraft who will be requesting descent. <laughs> Some overflight traffic over San Thomas. Looks like a St. Thomas departure climbing out on the Palco. It looks like we have a San Juan departure going southeast bound, Mountain 8105. And it looks like we have two aircraft just crossing through, Kerbons 526 and Jeffrey 949. It looks like we have track control over a windward 805, likely a Juliana Lander via Mike 576. So good. So keep that in mind. Oh, one other thing. Look at that. A 1200 code. Somebody in nine, a flight level 095 squawking VFR. How wonderful is that? So the stage is set for us to have some fun and to think us through. So let's go next slide where we'll go over some bullet points and see what exactly needs to be done. Like I said, in no particular order. We're just here having a good time, armchair quarterbacking it, Monday morning quarterbacking all of this so you can have an idea of what to do going forward through training. So I'll see you at the next uh, slide. All right, party people, here we are. This is sector two, scenario two. You just saw it, you're gonna see it again after this slide, but let's take a look at what the bullet points say. Look at this, R5 gate bound 8105 direct Modix, and you just took the hand off American 1391. Beautiful. We're going to have to solve that. We'll talk about that in a little bit uh, in a little bit later. Uh, when you resolve the, that situation, what is the highest altitude you can give American 1391? Keep in mind, there's a sky high somewhere north of uh, somewhere north of St. Thomas. And look, the sky high 431 was given direct antex by satellite. What coordination needs to be done? Uh, probably a point out. It's probably safe to say if you give direct antex off of Beef Island, the way they turn is probably going to at least clip a little bit of R4 and R6's airspace as they make their way westbound towards Santo Domingo. What is the highest altitude Spirit Wings 438 can climb to? Let's keep that in mind, our St. Croix departure there. When would 805 request a descent? Can you do it? Well, we'll talk over that as well. Swift Flight 400 requests a descent. Can you do it? Well, I think we can, just got to be safe about it. Mountain 8102 have any traffic? They probably do. I mean, we're asking you. So, <laughs> Yankee Victor 34566 calls climbing to flight of 180. What control action needs to take place? Uh, we'll go over that in a little bit too. We'll take it one by one. So we'll get there. JetBlue 78 calls you south of Trinky requesting higher. Hmm. 
We'll see if we can work on something after them too. Commence 526 is estimating Kika 2133, requesting level 360, mock 78. We appreciate you giving all this information. So let's see what we're going to do with it. Now, awesome. Knowing all this, plus some other things that you can deduce on your own, let's get at it. Let's go back to the freeze frame and let's take it uh, situation by situation. So I will see you there. Hey, hey, we're back and we're having a good time. I know I'm having a good time. I hope you're having a good time too. So let's go over situation by situation. So let's start in the southwest corner there. Windward 805 request descent, right? A little early for them, but they probably get around maybe 15 or 14 at Dandy, right? Uh, Yankee Victor's probably only climbing to 14. It's probably what your D side only cleared them up to. Their non-radar up to 14. So you have Windward 805 going to be crossing Dandy at 15. Can you descend them? Well, don't get too far ahead of yourself. You have control for that aircraft. You have track control, but that aircraft's not in R2's airspace yet. So you're either calling R8 or telling when we're to stand by. A little tricky situation there. You can be very tempted to just comply and immediately serve up whatever it is they're requesting. We'll just take your time and just know that this aircraft is not in your airspace yet. So just call and request control so you can practice that. Interphone uh, phraseology. Look at Swift Flight. Swift Flight wants lower, and you have a King Air climbing a flight level 310. Well, Swift Flight's going to probably have to wait. Don't stop the King Air. Let him keep climbing, right? King Air's slow, and Swift Flight's fast. I think the, the point of this is Swift Flight lands San Juan, which is fine. He's got plenty of time to make a restriction at Vetus, as we saw with the Yukon. So just give traffic. So you can practic practice your traffic call there, right? Swift Flight 400, lower passing traffic, and that leads you right into the merging target procedure. So give that a go. Uh, go north of that target, Mount 8102, 10,000. Anything need done? Well, he's happy on his way on Red 888 or Romeo 888, the airway going towards St. Croix. But look, he has VFR traffic. And we're not talking that aircraft, right? Obviously, we're not giving services to it. They're squawking 1,200, and they're at 900,500. So that sounds like a great idea for a traffic call there. Just let Mount know he's there. Likely, he's using the right altimeter setting, 2992, and he is at that altitude that is being depicted. But you never know. So give some traffic there. Seaborne 4590 is on green 633, just cruising along. And we know that the Yankee Victor reported his assigned altitude as flight level 180. So let's let's reconcile that. Let's stop that Yankee Victor now that we have him radar identified. This is a great opportunity to practice your radar identification there. And amend altitude and just get everybody on the same page doing the right thing, right? We don't want to, we don't know what that's all about. We could figure that out later, but let's positively separate the aircraft. Going north of that JetBlue 788, probably going to maintain flight level 80, judging because Exo Jet 233 Victor or hugs and kisses. <laughs> yeah, Jet uh, 233 uh, Victor maintaining nine. So, what, what can you do? Well, do you have control for JetBlue 788? Well, if your D side uh, saw this situation and uh, protected for it with positive uh, separation there, then you probably do. You could turn JetBlue to the north east or northwest and get them out of the way and you could practice what a heading would be it's almost like a true north heading so maybe you know go 20 or 30 degrees on either side of that and see how that treats you you know so practice that and practice a traffic call it's always fun too you can practice hand or terminating radar services with the exojet that sounds like fun too copa 143 real simple there practice your radar service termination phraseology there Caribbean just gave you all the numbers, and you can tell them to maintain Mach 0.78, and I believe they want 36. Can you climb them? Do you want to climb the 36? I don't know. you got JetBlue coming down. Depending on what kind of rate, you can force them up, or you can tell them to wait. Great opportunity for emerging target procedure there. Spirit Wings 438 called in checking, and he wants higher. Well, you got that Mountain 8105 you got to respect, right? So maybe that might require some... Uh, Maybe not an on-course turn right away, because usually aircraft off of St. Croix, they turn left towards Ossel, towards St. Thomas. And actually leaving them on direct St. Thomas might actually do you some good. American 1391, though, you might have to use some pilot applied visual separation there, hoping that American sees them. Or you have to make American stay at 10 until, uh, until they pass the mountain, because mountain's been turned on course, which is fine. And once you clear the mountain with your American, you're gonna have to watch out for the sky high, that Brasilia, Going westbound, American 1391 is going to have to respect his altitude, too. So basically, we see all this here. The stage is set for you to pause the video and just practice all of your phraseology and have some fun with it. Think outside the box and have a good time. This is your sandbox planet. There's 
it's no pressure, it's a low pressure environment, so let's have some fun and go over it. So have a good time and I will see you at the next scenario. See ya. All right, everybody, welcome back. It's a good time. I hope you're having fun. I know I am. And this is another awesome opportunity for us just to cover some things and have a good time while doing it. So we see here not too many aircraft, not as many aircraft as it was the last time, but some funny, tricky situations brewing nonetheless. Looks like we have American 2219. It's probably going to call us and we need to be radar identified, so keep it on the back burner. It looks like we have a sequence, a SLUGO to solve, JetBlue 2761 and American 2486. We have a 1200 code over Gouda, uh, roughly around Gouda, so they're probably going to call us. More than likely, it's a good speed. Who departed St. Barth? We have an Amerijet coming up on Gabar. We have an Amflight 6907. F flight level 180, landing San Juan on green 633. JetBlue 1818, cutting across the sector there. Delta 201, sometimes a frequent visitor here from OR Tambo, landing in San Juan for a technical stop. Probably going to be requesting lower. French West 422, going direct Antex or on course. I play level 180, staying high. And look at that, a Medevac 25 Lima Juliet descending into beef. Looks interesting because they're going to want to get down, reference that French West, reference that Delta too. And good speed 102. Is climbing to a flight level 175. I think it'd be a great opportunity to like good speed 111 know about them and vice versa. So, yeah, we got some things going on here. So, keep that in mind. Let's go over to the bulleted list, see what that has to say, and uh, let's get this done. All right, party people. Sector two, scenario tres. Good speed 102 is climbing via Florida flight level 175. Very good. Keep that in mind. He's got his. his Buddy aircraft at flight level 165. So he's going to try to just climb VFR through them. You might want to give some advisories, take some control actions with these VFR. VFR people too, as we uh, campaign so hard. Do you have a sequence of SLUGO? Well, yeah, you do. You got that American and the uh, JetBlue. So any ideas how to solve it? Well, we'll talk over it. Better back 25 Lima Julia is requesting a, a descent into beef. Do they have traffic? If so, who? Do you have control over that aircraft? We learned from the last scenario. Don't get overzealous. Don't get too far ahead of yourself. Get control and assess the traffic situation. And you probably do. You have the Delta and you have the French West, but you can at least give them something. Good Speed 101 calls you for VFR advisories. Where do you think that aircraft is? Well, we have an idea that that 1200 code over Gouda is probably him or her, and they want VFR advisories back to San Juan. So let's oblige them. American 2219 checks in Southeast of Juice. What is the highest altitude you can climb them to? Good question. Let's keep that in mind. Delta 201, who lands San Juan via Vita, is requested ascent. What is the safest altitude you can improve? Keeping in mind you have the French West, who he's very, very much faster than, and you have the Medevac descending into uh, Beef Island, direct, via direct, so use direct. Marriage at 8933, request a high speed climb and on course, it's checked in off of Bradshaw. How can you make this work? Well, just remember that that Boeing 767, that heavy Boeing 767, who loves to climb and go fast, is going to eat that Amphlight's lunch at level 180, that Beach 1900 at uh, on Green 633. So let's figure out a way we can do that. So now take your time and practice your traffic calls, radar ID procedures, proper phraseology commands, and frequency changes. I have faith in you. You can do this. So let's have some fun. I'll meet you at the slide again, and we'll take care of business. All right, ready, set, jets, go. Let's figure it out here. American 2219 wants to climb, right? And its climb looks good, right? He has no north, correction, no traffic from the northwest, no southeast bound traffic immediately in his way, right? Our airspace structure is designed where no airways really crisscross um, the Juliana departure corridor. Well, that's true only to a point. We still have the Lima airway route structure that takes aircraft from South America and the South Caribbean and transitions them transitions them to New York Center's airspace. So we have pesky good old Lima 459 there. And look who's on Lima 459 making their leisurely stroll northbound as JetBlue 1818 at 32. So I think we should respect that. American's not quite up to speed yet. We don't know their climbing potential. And JetBlue 1818 is at a relatively low in route altitude, right? 32, it's relatively low. So let's stop that American 2219 at 30. Wonderful. You can practice radar identifying and climbing them to that, right? That's good. Have at it. Good speed, I think it was, was it 100 Bravo or whatever good speed it is. 
you can give them a code, make up a code and pretend that that's you and you uh, pretend that you're able to give them a code and radar identify them on the spot. Use a little position verification, right? Uh, a non-beacon method of radar identification, right? Have fun with chapter five. It's a great chapter. Uh, Amplite 6907 on green 633, we already talked about them. They're just minding their own business, having a great time flying. And an Amerijet is, like I said, going to eat their lunch. So what can you do? You know, you could turn Amerijet. Amerijet's going to climb like a champ. So just keep that in mind, a little vector to the southwest, never hurt nobody, and get him up and over, right? Not, not bad. Delta 201, once lower. And you got a couple things Cook in there. You have that French West 422 at level 180. You have the Delta 201 at 34 and wanting lower. And you have that Medevac who needs to get down the beef, right? So, you know, you could be looking at intermittent altitudes, no pilot's discretions, you know, limit that stuff. Just start assigning hard altitudes. But first and foremost, if you're going to touch that Medevac, make sure you get some control from R8, right? It's not your airspace. We are in a consolidated R2 standalone sector. Uh, American 2486 is. First and uh, quite ahead of the JetBlue 2761, but JetBlue has got to be first because he's faster, right? Let's say you have to make this work. Well, there's a couple ways to skin this cat, and uh, sometimes this is as simple as getting American down using some positive separation, right? Say, hey, you know, JetBlue 2761, uh, descend to maintain, you know, flight level 240, stop that American at 25, and turn them, yank them to the south, right? Get them behind that JetBlue. You have some space to do it, right? Just just respect American 2219. Just make sure that they're not in conflict, right? But there's more than there's more than ways to skin a cat. I mean, you always have the bell to say, hey, D side, uh, Americans first, right? If you, if you really can't solve this or you're not comfortable doing that yet, whether you're training or um, in the lab, you know that's a viable option. Don't why work harder than you have to, right? But try to solve it yourself there. I and mean, nothing wrong with taking American out down south. And just having JetBlue sail by them, slow down the American, you know, something like that. You know, stop a good speeds climb. You're allowed to stop a VFR climb, right? You're just not allowed to stop, have an altitude and vector the, off the aircraft, right? You can't have both, but you can have one or the other, right? They have to maintain VFR somehow. So you can stop VFR, you know, good speed 102, call the traffic and stop them, you know, 500 feet below. No harm in that, right? So this is good. You got some things going on that you can take care of and practice, right? You can practice different situations, practice different phraseology and all that good stuff. So have at it and have a good time and I'll see you at the next scenario. Well, bienvenidos and welcome back. As you see in this sector, there's a blob of weather. Yikes, ugly, ugly weather, right? South of Beef Island and slightly northeast of St. Croix. Don't panic. This is fine. Weather happens. This is the Caribbean, right? It's, we're known for beautiful weather, sunshine, and, you know, swaying palm trees and uh, wonderful waves and white sea foam. But it looks like it's a crappy day over the Beef Island, right? Over the British Virgin Islands and U.S. Virgin Islands, it looks like we got a little blob of weather. Now, this is in a vacuum, right? Just have a little suspension of disbelief, right? There's a blob of weather just concentrated, a small, you know, moderate to extreme system that is in the middle of the sector and it's nowhere else. So just work with me on it. That's, that's where it's at. This is helping you to practice your weather calls, right? You're proving weather deviations and you have quite a bit to do. So this is perfect time with the targets not moving to practice your weather calls with Seaborne 4638, Windward 804, United 1444, JetBlue 882. KLM 733 just is overflying the airspace and LexJet 155 is on Mike 576, probably a Juliana Lander. So you're gonna have to figure out how to make that all happen. Eastern 9002 is gonna need that weather call. Maybe he wants to deviate. How does that look with the United's climb? Just saying, Delta 735 is turning to the northwest towards St. Thomas, but he might, they might want to deviate around that weather. And it looks like, yeah, Seabreeze 402, who hit St. Thomas, and is now turning on course to wherever they're going, maybe direct Modix. Delta 465 is climbing. You have American 943 at 21, landing St. Thomas. And you have the Pilatus Fox Roscoe Sierra Bravo Echo at flight level 230, probably going to want some. Uh, advisories about that weather system as well, landing Juliana. So with that sage being set, let's go over to the bulleted list and take a look at uh, what we should be getting uh, 
what we got going here. All right, everybody, here we are. Sector two, scenario four. Delta 465 is a part of the Palco sit at St. Thomas, easy enough. As you know, they usually found St. Thomas, Palco 7, Palco, Direct Molly, and American 943 is screaming for lower. There's still a 21 up there, getting closer to St. Thomas. How, what can you do? See the Palco 7 chart, click here. So if you need to see it, it'll pull up it on Air Nav, and it'll be wonderful just to orientate yourself with what it is. Delta 735 needs higher to top the weather north northeast deviation what are the factors at play do they have traffic well we have that map that mountain or sea breeze turning southeast bound at st thomas but 155 one slower can you make this happen what's the best altitude for them okay just keep in mind you have that klm opposite direction at 34. bosby wants to remain on present heading to avoid the weather they land st martin but united 1444 and windward 804 dv right to the north what factors are at play here well there's a saying go vertical when there's weather just Go vertical, right? Everybody's going to do their own thing. At that point, when there's weather and everybody wants to deviate, you basically become a referee at that point. They're going to play their game. You are there just to keep it safe, right? You're like a hockey referee at that point. Now, 1440 wants to climb ASAP, believing they can top the weather. What is the safe altitude? That, uh, what is a safe altitude given the situation? Well, we'll take a look at that too. So now, yet again, take your time, practice your traffic and weather calls, radar ID procedures, proper phraseology commands, and frequency changes. You can do this. You can solve this, right? It's frozen in time. Yet again, you're that Monday morning armchair quarterback. I have faith in you. We're going to have good time. We'll talk through it. So let's get back to the scenario itself. See you. Uh, see you there. All right, party people. Let's do it. Let's take a look. So, Seaborne, no factor with the weather. Just give him a friendly weather call, right? Low priority. He might maybe even be under the weather. Maybe this weather is some kind of towering cumulonimbus, you know, towering, growing in size, you know. So, as a courtesy, give him the weather. Windward wants to deviate right at 22. Perfect. He's 1,000 feet. And all he wants is 1,000 feet below that Fosby, right? That PC-12 that wants to stay on present heading. That United believes he can top the weather. What can you give them? Well, with respect to FOSB, you can monitor that. You can keep them at United Climbing. Just keep in mind, you have that JetBlue A2 at a relatively low altitude of flight level 300 there. So, you know, 28 is the best you can do for now. 29 wrong for. The KLM is happy at 34. He's none the wiser, but he had that flex jet wanting lower. Make sure you call and get control. That's the tricky part there. You know, call up R8 and ask for control. What are you going to give them? Give them 35? That sounds splendid. United 9th, or you, Eastern 9002 needs to know about that weather. That's great. He's not conflicting with anybody. If United wants higher, he's, United stopped at 28 for JetBlue. So Eastern's kind of all by and lonesome there. Delta 735, though, that is a problem. He, they want to deviate, right? Well, if they deviate to the Northwest, they're going to turn that sea breeze. So 120 is the best you can do. 12,000 is the best you can do for now. And Seabreeze 402 is doing just fine. Give them weather, right? Practice your weather call there and practice your traffic call with that Delta. Fosby, Fosby's fine. Keep him at 23. He ain't hurting nobody up there and he's got a long way for descent. So you're fine. Try not to be too distracted by the Fosby. They can do whatever they want. If they truly want to deviate and you had the limited deviation, got plenty of airspace up to the north, and would just require a friendly point out with your friend working R4. Now, here's a tricky situation. Delta 465, he is almost, they are almost done flying to Palco, right? At Palco, we know they're going to make a weird northbound turn to Molly, right in front of your arrival. So, this might be an instance where you at call uh, R3, call the satellite sector and ask for control, swing them out to the west. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nobody out to the west right now. Nobody will be out to the west. You have no overflying aircraft, and there's no airways that really go uh, southeastbound over there that would create a head-on situation over the San Juan terminal area. So westbound is always option, or turn them straight up north. That won't hurt, too. 360 heading, 010 heading if you're being extra cautious, and it'll keep him out of the way, that American 943. And in American 943, you can start him down. You should have probably already did that. Let's just say you just sat down and, you know, you took a briefing, and you know, that's what you got to do. That's what you were left with. Those were the cards you were dealt, so get American going. Give them their restriction of jets, you know. So you got a lot you got a lot going for you here and nothing too crazy. So a lot of stuff that you can practice and have a good time with. So... Yeah, do your thing, guys. All right, I'll see you at the next scenario. Hi, hi, hi there, Droogies. 
Steve again here, and we've moved sectors. As you see, we've moved to the Wild West, the Anything Goes sector of Sector 8, the Ocho at San Juan. The weirdest sector because there's a whole bunch of airspace, but all the conflicts only happen in truly two areas. One is the northwest corner and one is the southeast corner. Funny how that works out, man. But it's with purpose, too, because immediately west of San Juan, you have the island of Hispaniola, so you have Santo Domingo over there, you have Punta Cana, La Romana, Las Americas, a whole bunch of airports that support leisure, vacation traffic, and we bridge that gap for European aircraft, aircraft that originated in Europe, flying over and set them up for uh, them to transition to uh, Punta Cana approaches terminal airspace. So it's kind of crazy. So we've got some things cooking here. We got some situations down the GC and Nauta area. We got some Mike 576 traffic there. It's gonna be fun to practice some advisories. You have somebody squawking a discrete beacon code over Mylock or the Mylock area at a VFR altitude, which we'll get to the bottom of that. You have American 2703 saying hi and bye to them on Lima 337, that little sliver airway that just goes in our airspace not very long. You have a Delta approaching Scapa at 33. Nice. Caribbean 793 at 35. Looks like Santa Domingo gave Copa 142 direct Mayus, and he's kind of fallen behind the JetBlue 1938 on Green 633. Looks like you have a target to south of Mayagüez, 2,500, squawking 1,200, so a BFR guy, maybe a CARE, you know, a twin Cessna. And American 1293 making their way um, south eastbound to St. Croix. Night Cargo 8114 is looking like they are proceeding direct Agua de Airport. UPS 145, looks like they're just happy at 18 on the Wiser, and then you just took a handoff on Avianca 259 climbing on the Gambo. So we have some things cooking here, lots of airplanes, but lots of space and lots of knowledge on what to do. So I have faith in you that we can get through all this together, completely reconcile what we got cooking. So without further ado, let's take a look and see what the list has to say. All right, you scallywags, let's get down to business, right? Sector 8. Scenario one, Delta 722 called you up there on Lima 455, and their kin estimate is 2055, requesting 340 as soon as possible at Mach 0.79er. When can you make this happen? Okay, put that on the back burner. Let's keep that in mind. Avionca 259 is on the Gambo SID, and you just took the handoff. Knowing the nature of this procedure, what it needs to be done ASAP. To see the chart, click here. So if you want to see the Gambo and just kind of brief yourself on what it is, click there. It'll take you to AirNav. Coast Guard A1 has called you Squawk and Company no other information. What do you think is going to take place? Keep that in mind. We know Coast Guard, and he says you Squawk and Company. Not real proper phraseology, but we have an idea of who that might be. Orange 369 is estimating O-Bike at 2057, requesting flight 410 Mach 85. Their flight plan reads this. They departed Hato, Curacao, Mylock, Mike 566, Arcadia, Direct 30 North, 045 West. And then, you know, probably more airways and fixes until they get to Skipple. What needs done? Keep in mind, what's, what's your San Juan SOP say about that? San Domingo, get a couple one for you, direct Joshi and, the, and uh, new, well, now, the aircraft wants lower. What's the lowest you can go? Okay, let's, whoa, 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 whoa. think about that. Thank you, 114 has Brinken in sight. Brinken Airport in sight. What all needs to be done hearing them say that? Cool. Yet again, LOA matters. Your Brinkin Tower and San Juan SO or LOA sounds like a great thing to apply here. American 273 is requesting direct OCDU and UPS 145 is, directing, is requesting direct GoSoul. How, how can these be done efficiently? Couple of CARE 55 calls you off Mayaguez looking for advisories. Ah, we found that bandit who was squawking 1200 off Mayaguez. It's CARE 55 for advisories of San Juan. What's the best way to reply to them? American 1293 is ready for descent, coordinate accordingly, and keep the aircraft until they go over to R7. Good. Challenge accepted. Keep American 1293 on frequency, right? This is fun. Uh, the uh, preferential routing is Miguel after they hit Miguel and they go direct to St. Croix. They're only going to be in R2 airspace for a little bit and they're going to be descending anyway. So do R2 a solid and keep them. Yes, let's pretend R2 is busy over there and they have, they have some things cooking and you can take care of this and help alleviate some traffic, some frequency congestion. So yet again, now take your time and practice your traffic and weather calls, radar deep procedures, phraseology commands, and frequency changes. You can do this. I know you can. You guys are doing great so far. So 
I will meet you at the uh, at the screenshot again, and we'll take it aircraft by aircraft. See you there. Okay, here we are, huh? Back at it. Same picture, now with a little bit more background knowledge, right? So here we go. Basics would be is Coast Guard, 82 or 81, right? That's the guy's fucking 1771. That's their company code. That's their function code, right? So all we have to do is sometimes they have a flight plan, sometimes they don't. This is where your D side helps you out and you just get all the information from Coast Guard 81. Likely you're going to do some work uh, between Dandy and Mylock and they're going to go operational. They're going to go below radar coverage. And usually they have a delay message associated with that flight plan. So, you know, have your D side, test the D side and the A side's knowledge. It'll be good for them. It'll keep them honest, right? Skill work that uh, they can uh, hone in on and perfect. Looks like you have emerging target procedure, Orange 369. As we know, we need to verify their route up to 60 degrees west, which is easy because we have the flight plan there. It's a simple one is uh, Mike 576 to Arcadia, but you know, just do it, practice it. Practice saying it efficiently and fast and maybe combining transmissions, giving them a traffic call. The Iberia Heavy A350 up there at 40, and helping out Iberia, give them a traffic call. Good, that little corn's taken care of. I'm pretty sure Delta has uh, traffic approaching GC or maybe already north uh, northwest of GC, the camera where I appear is covering it. So I'm pretty sure there's an aircraft down there. American 27 Theory 3 wants to wreck those sea do. Well, that's fine. Um, what's stopping you from doing that? Probably nothing, right? But keep in mind, we're looking for an efficient call there because we said UPS 145 wants to wreck Go Soul. So how can we take care of both of those aircraft? Assuming that uh, Santa Domingo is on a combined configuration. Can we take care? Can we kill uh, two birds with one stone? I think we can. Delta 722 came in ready and guns blazing for 34. Well, is that a good idea? Probably not the best idea right now with that American 2703. Do you know what the on course heading looks like for a Sea Doo? I mean, I have a general idea of what it looks like, but uh, you don't know what that's going to do. So, probably emerging target procedure there. Just tell Delta the slowest jets. <laughs> and, um, Wait for it, right? But you have all the information. You can write that down on a ticket, and uh, good job, Delta, being ready. You can have a trifecta of traffic right there. That's what it doesn't look like they're all factored. They're probably not all going to merge at one time, but that's a great way to practice your traffic calls, you know, between Delta and American, American and Caribbean. It'll be great. It'll be a great time for you to have a good time. American 1293, right? We said that we will we'll take responsibility, and we'll work them all the way into St. Croix, which is awesome. You know, we know that uh, according to the SOP, from that direction, St. Croix arrivals get pilot's discretion to 1-1000, which is perfect. Point them out to R2, practice your point out phraseology, and keep that aircraft until it's time to pass them to R7, which also gives you an opportunity to practice a frequency change. Can't do that. Avionca 259, we challenge the Gambo. So the nature of the Gambo is said, there's no turns right off the airport, right? There's a turn off the runway, uh, but there's no turns uh, other than radar vectors to... Um, I believe it's Gambo. You can look at the chart and check me if I'm wrong. But now you have to point that aircraft out to R6 because depending on what the traffic situation is, especially on final and drawing a line out, any traffic to the west of the San Juan Airport, the approach or departure in this, case, in this instance has to get them above that. So they turn them. So get on the horn and put Avionca 259 on R6's scope and practice your point out phraseology. Sounds wonderful. Copa 142 wants lower, right? Look, they're about to level off at 25. Well, if you check your IDS and your status information, you know that restricted area 7105 is active um, to 15,000. So best you can do is 16 for now, Copa. Jeffrey 1938 has a clear shot all the way to Joshi. Wonderful. Practice your Joshi restriction. Care 55. Look at that. You kind of see who he is or who they are. And you can practice assigning a beacon code and your radar identification method. Pretty simple there. And depending on how CARE calls up, you can practice using a non-beacon way of radar identifying the aircraft, using a little position correlation there. Maybe ask them to ident, you know, just, just play out the scenario in your mind. NICRO 8114 has the field in sight. Awesome. This will be a great opportunity for you to practice your uh, approach clearance and coordinating with the tower with the position report. And UPS 145 wants to go soul. Perfect. Wonderful. Can you approve it? This is to kind of get your wheels turning a little bit. Say maybe have your D side uh, 
request flight plan transfer UPS 145 and American 2703 both to Santa Domingo. So when you call, you hand them off and APRAC direct the respective fixes all in one call. Make the most use out of your uh, time and make life easier for you. So that's how we would navigate that a little bit. So have at it, have a good time and just do your thing. It's your, it's your, it's your sandbox here. The world is your oyster. So take care of business and have a good time and I'll see you at the next scenario. Well, here we are yet again, back together, back in sector eight. And looks like a good time we have going on too. Not as many aircraft this time as in the last sector and maybe even fewer things to do, but nonetheless, some fun things to do and some good practices to be had. So taking a look here, we have some, we have a mixture of aircraft, right? We have some turboprops cooking here. We have some heavy aircraft and just an overall good time. We have some foreign aircraft. We have cargo aircraft. We have passenger aircraft. We have all kinds of aircraft. And that's the fun part about sector eight because you could be working a heavy jet into Aguadilla and as we saw in the last scenario, you can be working at Twin Cessna VFR out of Mayanquez and everything in between. So take a look here. You got, it's kind of more, a little more balanced this time. You have a little bit going on northwest corner. You have a little bit in the southeast corner. You have a little bit in the southwest corner. You have a little bit of something going on in the middle, a little something for everybody and uh, learning abound. So let's take a look at the bullet list and see what our to-do list is. And I will see you there. All right. Welcome back. Here we are. Sector eight, scenario two. Okay, so you hear from JetBlue 1818. Hmm, I didn't see that guy there. They would like to know their position. They never got a frequency change from PRCO. Where do you think they are? What radar ID methods can you use? All right, it's on the back burner. I think we might have had a mode C intruder in, in that scenario. So let's keep that in mind. That could be the culprit. Tampa 4040 is ready for descent to San Juan over Joshi. Okay, very nice. Can you give them that restriction? Keep that in mind. Cargo Lux 45 Lima is ready for descent into Brinkin, but the ATIS is out of service and the weather is Bravo. Oh, look, wind 085 at 12 gust 15, visibility 10. Nice. So, can you give that line? Can you give it for them? You know what I mean? They can't pick up the ATIS. You're not too busy. This is a great opportunity to practice you reading a meat tart. So, let's do it and have a good time. Can you probably relay this to them? What is the lowest altitude you can assign? Good, so give them the weather and give them the, uh, give them an altitude. And flight 6901 is really, really heavy tonight. Oh boy, don't call him heavy, you know what I mean? He's just a little guy. And is off to St. Thomas, what coordination might need to be taken, might need to take place. Okay, keep that in mind. That's that guy off Aguadilla going eastbound. FedEx 257 asks if they are cleared for the approach. Oh, okay, so they're just, you know, verifying. Can you give it to them? Do you call them heavy? Keep that in mind. Amplite 8106 requests 7,000. Can it be done? What is the sequence order between him and Amplite 7120? And Amplite 7120 is ready for lower and they have the numbers. Is that sufficient? Okay. 7110 knowledge here mixing you up. So now take your time. Yet again, frozen in time. Have some good, have a good time while you're frozen in time and practice your traffic and weather calls, radar ID procedures, proper phaseology command, and frequency changes. You can do this. I have faith in you. Here we go. All right, without further ado, that is JEPO 1818 at flight level 340, right? So what can you do? Well, you can have the aircraft ident, right? There you go. There's a great way to radar identify aircraft. The ident feature is wonderful. You can have them squawk a discrete beacon code, which is even better because you have that. You have that in your tab list, right? On your micro ERTs uh, display, or you can check the strip, say squawk this, and you can radar identify him. In the meantime, and you, you're pretty sure that's him, you better give him traffic. By the time you get back to it and radar identify, him and Tam might have already crossed. So give him and Tam traffic. Perfect. Tampa, once lower. Cool. You have the Yankee Victor coming out. What can you give him? Well, 29 sign sounds about right to get him down and give him 4,000 feet until you can figure out what's going on there with the Yankee Victor. Yankee Victor 2344 is in conflict with Amflight, making their way westbound so you can stop them at an intermittent altitude right nothing harm harmed way there carlos 54 lima give them the traffic right practice your METAR. practice giving it as if it was a recording of the atis right a little terminal stuff here a uh, little terminal uh fun stuff for you as an in route controller and give them something lower right the best you can do is probably 37 with that av ronca leveling off at 36 no big deal there uh, Amplite 7120 and Amplite 8106 look like they're equidescent what can you do well 
Amplite 7120 is set up pretty nicely. You know, if you had any doubts, you can always vector your Amplite 8106 after Ponce, after they cross around the Ponce area, put them on a 290 heading, put them on a downwind, and and hope for the best there. You know, very simple. Night Cargo 409er, a distractor, right? Just pass discretion to seven, no harm there. But you know, Amplite 8106 is going to want lower. And this happens quite a bit whenever you have traffic on Route 4 landing Aguadilla and you have. Uh, traffic landing San Juan, whether it be through Josh here or the Dorado gate, they're going to be at seven, and the lowest you can give is seven in area for both aircraft. So you're going to have to give and take a little bit, especially because you don't want them pointing at each other, both descending to seven. We don't want that. It's something we want to avoid. And flight 6901 is a little tricky here. They are not going to be above approaches airspace. What is approaches airspace? Do you know what they own to? Keep that in mind. What's going to happen? Who do you Put, give the point out to. Who are you going to call? You want all things to get your gears turning. And FedEx 257, just an opportunity for you to practice your approach clearances and termination, you know, phraseology. So very simple stuff here. Have a good time. The world is yours. Tony Montana, you know, it's going to be a good time. Promise you that. And uh, just take your time and just hone in, perfect your phraseology, and just get your wheels turning and start thinking critically. All right, see you at the next one. Hey everybody, Steve again. Welcome back to the last one, last but certainly not least. As you see, when there is weather, there is nothing least about it. Absolutely a great time. And that weather is real, right? That weather happens all the time, especially in the late summer through fall, there's always a thunderstorm in the afternoon around the Josh here. It's just the way the island weather patterns are. So that immediately jumps out at you. You got an Amplite 6901, likely a Barrinkin lander, 88 Romeo Bravo at 4,000. Care 55, already read identified, going through that weather like a champ. American 1254, Sam One lander, Jeffrey 1938, Sam One lander. Teal 34, available 180, looks like they're on route 4. American 2713, American 2317. Ah, a little confusing there, huh? I'm gonna keep that in mind. Avianca 20, Cummins 45, Cummins 43, and JetBlue, uh, was that 1020 or 1021? Perfect. You got some things at play here. So let's go over to the bulleted list. By now, you should be a pro at this. Your wheels should be turning and saying, hey, you know what? Let me add this. I got some work to do. So yeah, exactly. Get your hands dirty. Get scrubbed up, you air traffic surgeon, you. And let's have at it. So let's see what the list has to say. Sector Ocho, Scenario, Trace. Very good. Breaking calls and requests release for Emirates 1195 off runway 8. What should be considered in this release given? What do you know about the release procedures? Well, good. We know that we have that Cirrus just flying around out there, going to make your life a living heck at 4,000. So this might want you to reconsider what altitude you initially assign after your departure. So this is like a D-side function. And place these 0 has just been handed off to you. You take it, and they are automatically, just as luck would have it, as soon as you take that handoff, they are coming over screaming for a weather deviation, and you need to make it happen and coordinate accordingly. What is the proper way to let... American BO, the two Americans know about the respective similar call signs. Are there any other subsequent steps to follow? Good to know, right? Let them know about each other, possibly let the soup know so they can maybe try to mitigate those flight numbers that enter our airspace at the same time. And flight zero and quest the RNAV 8 was the best initial approach fix to assign. Good. This goes back to your knowledge of the charts that you, uh, approach charts that you study so much. Avianca 120 has not yet been radar identified. They are on Lima 335, estimating O-Bike at 2344, requesting 43 at Mach 85. After O-Bike, they fly direct Arcadia. Good. What are you going to do with that information? Well, it's all useful, and it's awesome that they said it all that fast. Some of those pilots, they, they know what you're looking for, what information you're looking for anyway. American 1254 and JetBlue 1930 requesting deviation for weather around Josh. He was the best course of action, and what coordination procedures may need to take place? Good. Don't be afraid to close Josh. He's perfectly, perfectly within your prerogative to do so. You might have to take him north, right, to the north side of the island, which we do a lot. Okay. Oh, are there any conflicts pending cooking up, right? Well, this might be a first for us in some of these exercises. They have an air conflict that needs to be solved. Take your time. Practice your traffic and weather calls. Your radar D procedures, proper phaseology commands, and frequency changes. You can do this. I have faith in you. And it's the last problem, so make it the best. I will see you yet again at the freeze frame. All right, you awesome people, party people. Let's consider the following. Like Bill and I would always say, consider the following. Okay, we have that Emirates ready to go. They're ready for release off of runway eight. 
I think the best thing to do is to keep them at 3,000, right? 3,000 after departure, right? Expect whatever in 10 minutes because of that Cirrus uh, 8 Romeo Bravo there. Something to consider. Amplify 69011's deviation. It's a good call. Call R, uh, R, R1 and R5 or R1 if they're working it by themselves and ask for uh, control, right? And we also want to know what is the best initial approach fix to get. Let's keep them out of the area, the mountainous area, the high MV area, and let's give them Aquaba, right? We know that the RNAV runway 8 approach into Aguadilla is a T-style RNAV approach and direct Aquaba. We'll take them to the northwest, so you're also going to need to point out with R6, but just keep them away from that weather and all that stuff you got going on. If you got Joshy stuff going on, especially if that Joshy stuff's going to go over Dorado, just just keep them out of the way. Just, you know what I mean? Just keep them, keep them out of the way. Care 55 is harmless. Chances are they're probably below the weather maintaining VFR, which is fine. American 1254 and JetBlue 1938, yeah, that's a good idea. Maybe put them over the Boca Gate, right? We know we can do that by... Uh, Coordinate accordingly, right? Because, you know, technically jets are not allowed over the Boca Gate, but we can coordinate. Anything can be possible with coordination, right? And uh, figure out a suitable altitude there, maybe seven or 5,000 over Boca, Route 2 to San Juan, you know, something like that. It'll be a great opportunity for to, to practice your clearance procedures, right? Brush up on some D-side stuff that you, uh, you know, in-air, you know, weather reroutes, right? You know what I mean? Awesome time for that. American 2317, American 2713. Best that they know about each other, right? Similar sounding call sign. You know, use caution. You know, there's some good phraseology for that. TL34 is going to request a deviation. We know that. Is he your control? Is he in your airspace yet? Some good questions to consider. Kirby 45, 43, and JetBlue 10, I believe it's 1020 or is it 1021? Whatever, it's kind of covered up by the camera here. But uh, JetBlue, it looks like you have an opportunity to practice your traffic calls. And I know it doesn't look like it, but Avianca is uh, considerably faster than, than American 2317. Is it worth a second look to see who's in front or are they in conflict? Something to consider. So you have some things cooking here. And guess what? You have all the time in the world to solve it. And as we know, there is no priority. There is, no, I mean, truly, as, as long as you're not putting planes together, it's really not even a wrong answer, right? There may not be the most efficient way to do it, but... Wrap your head around this. Have a good time doing it. And uh, truly appreciate your time and attention today. And we will see you uh, down the road at the next lesson. But for now, it's Steve signing off. And uh, have a fantastic rest of your day or night.